Give Donald Trump credit. He never ha fails to hold our attention. Today, as he was naming a new labor secretary, he took questions for about an hour on just about everything, like leaks from intelligence agencies. Those are criminal leaks. They're put out by people either in agencies. I think you'll see it stopping because now we have our people in. Unfortunately, much of the media in Washington, D.C., along with New York, Los Angeles, in particular, speaks not for the people, but for the special interests and for those profiting off a very, very obviously broken system. I inherited a mess. It's a mess. At home and abroad, a mess. In the process, we did learn the name of the new nominee for Labor Secretary, Alexander Acosta. This announcement comes a day after Andy Puzder pulled his name when it became clear his ability to clear the Senate was murky at best. Acosta is a graduate of Harvard Law School, currently a law school dean in Florida. He's been confirmed by the Senate three times for previous jobs in the government. Despite some high-profile management challenges since arriving at the White House, Trump said today everything is running just fine. I turn on the TV, open the newspapers, and I see stories of chaos. Chaos. Yet it is the exact opposite. This administration is running like a fine-tuned machine. Donald Trump often touts his credentials as a successful businessman who knows how to get things done. Maybe you've heard of a book called The Art of the Deal. Since being sworn in, he's hosted leaders of the automotive industry, signed an executive order to re revive controversial pipelines, and said he wants to make it easier for corporate America to get its work done. We think we can cut regulations by 75 percent, maybe more. Wall Street seems to like what it's hearing. The stock market has been soaring, which prompted Trump to tweet, stock market hits new high with longest winning streak in decades. Great level of confidence and optimism even before tax plan rollout. Joining me for more on how the business community views the Trump White House are Gotham Mukunda, an assistant professor at the Harvard Business School who wrote The Indispensable, pardon me, Indispensable When Leaders Really Matter. Good to meet you, by the way. Thank Muhammad you. Ali, president and CEO of Carbonite, a cloud backup company based in Boston. Muhammad, it's good to see you again, too. You again. Well, the president did bend the facts a little bit about the stock market. For the most part, it has been going up. I'm not an economics major, but I always thought that what Wall Street likes is certainty, predictability. They get none of that with Donald Trump. Why are the numbers going up? So I think the initial response was into the promise of sort of Republican tax cuts, and you see sort of a bias, maybe capital gains tax cuts. There's a bias towards investors that seemed likely to come in, but it's worth noting most of the run-up was in financials. So when you take the entire management team of Goldman Sachs and put them in the United States government, People believe that Goldman Sachs will benefit from that. I guess that's uh, Donald Trump's method of draining the swamp, is he's just moving it uh, or something along those lines. Uh, so what I think we'll see over time is this, was, we're already starting to see level off. But even more than that, the fundamental underpinning of the global financial system, of the global economic system, for about 70 years has been the idea that when the chips are down, the United States government knows what it's doing. No matter how mediocre a president might be, however wrong-headed policies, when things are in trouble, people count on the United States to gone? get it done. It's certainly in a great deal of jeopardy. You buying this thesis here, Muhammad? Somewhat. Um, I think uh, Gotham is, is on the right track here. On a short-term basis, the, 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 economy, the uh, market will respond positively because the president is talking about uh, making a variety of short-term benefits for primarily large corporations. But if you think about what powers the economy, it's actually not really the large corporations. It's all these small and medium-sized businesses. 50 and down and that sort of That's thing. That's right. Yeah. And those businesses are actually going to get impacted in a meaningful way. A lot of them are highly dependent on talent. And he's really doing nothing about talent. And this immigration order actually further restricts talent. We actually have a million job openings in the tech industry. 85,000 of them are filled with uh, H-1B visas. And actually, what we're looking to do here is to cut that uh, further. And it's going to disproportionately impact the growth engine of the, of the, of the country. Those are those specialty visas, for those that know, and specialty, uh, temporary visas and specialty occupations. Is this a, the travel ban affected your firm directly? Absolutely. We have about 1,000 people here uh, at Carbonite. Uh, two years ago, we had 500, so we've been hiring like you wouldn't believe. Last year, we hired 250 people. Uh, of our 1,000, about 100 a, a of them are foreign-born. Um, I have to say that we actually did a call with our immigration lawyer 
over 10% of the company called in, not because they are going to be ejected by this, but they're worried. These are people from China, from Mexico, uh, from Canada. They're worried about whether they can get back, whether they get through that airport. It's, it, it's actually impacting productivity. That's how, I'm so glad Mohammed said that, because yeah. my understanding, it's not just those seven countries. People focus on the seven countries and do the math. It's the message that this sends the people from the Chinas, the whatever. Is that what the issue is the, here? The message is tremendous. One of the United States' greatest economic assets for the last few generations has been bringing in unbelievably talented immigrants who are one of the primary drivers of our economy. Could you imagine an American economy without Apple, without Google? But Apple and Google are both founded by immigrants or the children of immigrants. These people, if they do not come here, they don't vanish from the earth. They go to other countries. Mm -hmm. They go to our competitors. This, there is no benefit, none at all, to sending a message to the world, your best and your brightest, go somewhere else. But the, but the flip side of this is, uh, and again, maybe this is for bigger businesses, mm -hmm. Mohammed, rather than small, uh, I'll repeal two regulations for every new one. He's talking about cutting taxes, the corporate rate maybe in half, the top rate for especially the richest people pretty dramatically. I assume some CEOs uh, like that. Maybe a trillion dollar infrastructure investment, which I assume even liberal Democrats like. Those are good things if they happen, are they not? Look, there are a variety of good things here, but there are a lot of things that are highly problematic. Like what, for like, in beyond the travel ban? Net neutrality. We have an yeah. FCC chairman now who says that net neutrality is a thing of the past. Net neutrality has effectively been around since 1996, the Telecommunications Act. Our own Senator Markey was, yes. was key behind that. That actually spawned an entire industry, right, from the carbonites of the world, which highly depends on Wayfair, a, a company here. Everybody that, has access, for those who don't know what it means. That employs 3,000. Everybody what your has access. Ability to pay right? is, and yeah. if that goes away, sure, you're deregulating, but actually, what deregulation is in this particular case? It's code for giving the large carrier an advantage and actually disincenting the, the smaller companies that create the jobs. You know, in your book, you use a term I've never heard before, unfiltered leader. What does that mean, and how does it apply to Donald Trump? So an unfiltered leader is someone who comes into the system from outside or against the opposition of the elites, who does things that no one else would do. Whether it's elected, corporate, whatever, whatever. it's a leader. Yeah, That's okay. right. And so I, when I created that theory, I tested it with presidents of the United States. And what I found out is that overwhelmingly, the very best and the very worst presidents were unfiltered, people who did like this. But here's the worrying thing. What the theory says is that there are, if, if unfiltered people are either good or bad, how do I predict which one, right? That's what I want. I want to, I want to get the good ones. So there are four danger signs, four things that should really worry you about an unfiltered leader. Really? You'd say, don't pick this person. They are psychological and personality disorders, managerial incompetence, out of the mainstream ideologies, and massive inherited advantages that boosted them in their career without actually reflecting their abilities. How many of those does Donald Trump have? D Donald, Trump, Donald Trump is the only person in American history, as far as I can tell, who scores four for four on that. So if you are you sort of Nostradamus-like saying this is doomed regardless of what direction he takes because of those four criteria? No, I would not say it is certain. The theory is, but I would say it is, it is, he is more likely to fail and fail catastrophically than any other person who has ever become president of the United States. Well, in your meetings with fellow CEOs, mostly in the tech industry, what's the quiet talk, which maybe they aren't willing to say publicly, even though some do? What's the quiet talk There's about There's a lot of concern, Jim. Um, and a, a lot of the concern comes, I mean, from Republican CEOs as well as Democrat CEOs. We have plenty of Republican CEOs in the state sure, of Massachusetts. Of I mean, they're, they're brilliant people, right? Um, but they're worried. And a big part of the, why they're worried is that the current administration is not really taking advice from the people who really know how to, how to manage this economy. And, you know, the current administration can actually do a fine job if they were to take the right kind Perfect of advice. Segue. But they're not doing that. You have 15 seconds each. Give him 15. He likes watching television. Who knows? Give him 15 seconds of advice, Donald Trump. Call the people who, are, who actually know about the specific thing you're trying to solve for, it, like the immigration thing. Don't just rush off and do it. Assess it before you do Boy, it. Boy, that's a radical thought. How about your 15 <laughs> seconds? Fire Bannon and Miller and reach out to Republicans to try, who try and reach, break the deadlock and do the handful of things that have been stopped because even though everybody agrees they're a good idea, Republicans don't want to give the Demo uh, credit to Democrats and Democrats to Republicans. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks Great so much you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Great Jim. to see you again. Gentlemen, Likewise. thanks so much for your time.